Hello guys, Cedric again um, for a new tutorial today. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, recreating a simulation I've done with X particles recently that has been um, very surprisingly um, very, very popular on the internet, on Instagram. Um, uh, that's going to be this one you see have been um, on my page where I have only like a few thousand I mean 1,000 followers I got 23k uh, views on it and um, in fact it's open here let's have a look at it here does this um, simulation where the, the, the balls are crashing I'm going to show you on a bigger screen here I've prepared it for you guys so where the the balls are crashing into some sound and also bouncing into each other that's a second render that i haven't published yet that i did as a test for the um, for this tutorial and um with a, a little this is quite high definition while the other one is is a lower definition but still still the effect is quite cool so basically that's um that's what we will have a look at doing today uh, with this technique you can also do like this type of render where where you can explode things and and have the particles still stick together like if the, um, it was sound um yeah i've been um very happy um Recently, the um, motion designer community um, has been reposting my my thing, but not only them. Like um, how I see that world also, where I got um, uh, some some views also, and um, they did too. Um, the all CGI, so it's been very popular, and I'm very happy, and I have had a lot of uh, demand to. To explain how this works so uh, let's dive in and have a look at how we can make it happen all right here we are let's go inside cinema 4d um all right so first what we will do is we will create um a, a container that will that will be our particle container the particle will be um, uh, within this volume, they will be emitted there. So that will be our our first uh, step is to do the first cube. I'm going to put a display tag on it so that we see what happens inside. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit a little bit annoying. So like this. Um, that's the first thing I wanted to do. The second thing I want to do is create um, another cube around this one. I'm going to make it ever so slightly bigger. Um, like this. And um, why I make it bigger is uh, so that um, that will be like the collider. So when, when the particle will be generated, um, then they will collide against this. It doesn't need to be that tall. By the way, that's drop, uh, drop to floor here. Very, very useful. Um, okay, so this one also needs to be on the floor like that. All right, so here we are. We can start emitting some particles. Uh, let's get an XP system. Um, here is the XP system. You see that I don't have, I don't like to have the icon in the viewport, so I disabled it um, by default. Um, all right, so we have our first emitter here, and as I said, we want to emit from the lower box here. So let's go and um, uh, use an object and drop our first cube. That was the first we've made. And all the rest we don't really care because we will um, emit on a different thing here that's called hexagonal and um, the hexagonal uh, sh you will see what, what, what it does basically but before I, I click play uh, what we need to do is take off any speed we don't want to have any speed uh, happening on these and um, and uh, 
give them we don't want to emit everywhere we want to emit only on the first frame all right so if i click here you can see it generates a grid and um, it doesn't look good yet but um, let's have a look at what we can do to arrange this let's go to display we will put them into circle circle fields field sorry um, that will give us this and if we go in the option here we can put some ambient occlusion so we actually see the balls um, so that's it so now um, the the particles have been spawned and they fill up my my container great what we want to do with this particle we want them to to have some gravity on them um, so that they rest within within our container here but obviously now that i've put gravity if i press play they will fall off because i haven't yet put a collider tag on here so let's go to x particle here on the tag and um, give them a collider tag this is a box and um, the collision happens inside the box not outside so we we want to have that inside i don't want no bounce but however i want um a lot of friction so let's have a look at what happens when i do that now the smash to the floor it doesn't look like um what we want and the reason why it doesn't look like what we want is because um we need to do a couple of things here um first we will give them um this um these particles we will give them some um, we will go to ex extended data here and we will give them some of these um, extended data. First, we will want them to use rot rotation so that when they will be um, knocked by the balls later, the, 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 the grain um, doesn't only flies like this, but it actually rotates. And we're going to go on um, tangential or whatever you call it. Um, then we want to give them some fluid data because we want them to act like a fluid but we want them to act like a grain granular and um the, every, most of what we're going to do happens here thanks to this um this setting here um for granular what you need is um in that case we will need a lot of friction and we will see these two parameters if we need to change them later on we we may want to change them we may not let's have a look at what happens first since i've made this things will change here um i mean not quite because i haven't yet done the second thing that i need to do uh, i need to give them some dynamic and for that we will use an um, xp fluid effects for now we'll leave it to default and see what happens here all right so that's that's starting to get a little bit better um, they are being bounced around um, they are keeping trying to keep some some shape here well, let's put it a little bit higher on the on here and you see the cohesion is is stronger when when you do this it's quite nice now but it's still trying to go a little bit on the side if I go if I go to high here they will even get a little bit better um, anyway that's kind of what we want but as you can see it doesn't look like grain at all for now because that will happen in our emitter um, the more we reduce the radius here the more it will fill up the volume with um, as many particles as possible without them to um, collide let's have a look at um, at uh, if I put two let's say for now so obviously I won't be able to give you um, a lot of details on this tutorial because the more details the more time it takes to to preview and and see what happened but you see that they already don't behave exactly the same as they were before now that they are more they kind of rest more here um, that's one thing that uh, 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 
I've done in my in my final renders, I've generally got to accurate, really properly accurate. And um, for my last render, I even did accurate uh, collision, but I don't know if it changed anything. But I did press it before rendering um, my last before caching my last simulation. I was not sure if it actually changed anything. Um, all right, so here we have uh, the first part of our thing. We have our container filled up with balls. What I do also, um, I, I do add a little bit of uh, drag in here. And I'm going to go back to three for now um, here on my thing so that it's, we, we see a little bit quicker what, ha what happens. And the drag... Um, uh, keeps them more together and also when they will when they will knock it kind of gives like an effect of almost of slow motion um, of the grain and I, I liked it so so that's that's uh, some parameters that you will be able to play with later on when you will do your own animation now that's for the first part of our things um, the second part will be to have some balls um, uh, flying off and knocking this surface and making like and react with it so let's work on this um, while I'm working on this I'm going to go actually and um, remove this one and uh, what we will need first is a new emitter so let's go to emitter create an emitter um, this emitter I will want it to emit um, on the plus X so that I see they coming from the from the uh, from the left to the right I will not need a lot of them let's say like three or, or four something like that and um, let's display them differently so we see them um, let's give them a different color for now something like this and let's see what what happens here all right so they are being affected by the gravity and they don't have enough strength and they also are being affected by the, the drag and that's why they really really fall if I was to take off the drag they will go a tiny bit further and if I were to take off the gravity they will not fall at all so what we will do is we will um, we will go to the extended and they also been affected by the fluid effects which we don't want so let's go to the not extended data but to the modifier and remove this first of all and we will also remove the, the drag so now they need a bit more speed here and let's have a look how they behave oh sorry still not working the way I want so why not um, on my modifier I have exceeded the drag the, the this there is no reason they will not act a little bit better than this so let's have a look at why they don't fly off more um, I'm on red, I have a lot of speed, so there is no reason that I still, they still don't, don't go. Why not? Um, there is no reason for this. Let me think. The fluid is not, a, is that my gravity that is too strong on them? No, normally there is no reason. Without that they will not fall, so there is no no reason. So did I exclude the drag? Why is that? Modifier exclude fluid effects and drag. I'm confused. Um, that should not happen like this. Now they have been born and they don't even have any speed. Um, why not? Are they been affected by the let's let's have a look okay I understand what was happening um, let's uh, 
give them back the gravity and they will be too strong. I believe my my emitter was uh, almost out or something. So let's have a look at what happens here. So now they are far too fast, obviously. Um, let's reduce that speed and see. Yes, something like that. Okay, that's good. That's very good. All right. So now what we want them to do is to react with um, um to 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 react with our um uh, particles that are here let's have a look what happens now oh sorry here so they will be slower but nothing happens really here because they will need to collide with them and um, for that we will um, we will actually um, use a generator. So let's let's uh, generate. Let's make a, a, a generator here. Looks like we're gonna take a generator. That's gonna be our um, emitter one. That's very good. Um, and it will generate. Let's make a sphere. Reduce the. Um, um, the radius we, we want to reduce it. Um, that sphere, let's put it somewhere where we don't see it because we don't need it for now. And uh, let's put it in our generator. Um, our generator, we will want to put it into a connect object because like that on the connect object we can put a collider tag that will uh, make our um, our ball um, uh, collide with the other particle uh, however um, if i press play now i think it will get crazy you see the particles that they, they behave very weirdly the reason is um on this uh collider I need to exclude the emitter here I think now that will fix the problem you see they start to behave normal again um, but the the intersect and that's not what we want we want them to knock so for that we need to add a bit more of the dynamic and that's just a collision we will leave it default for now and see what happens and when they knock they will they will start to interact with each other which is good that's what we want okay very very good um one is gonna out here um that's very nice all right so they look a little bit small and at the moment i believe on my generator the they are the scale is using the particular radius so if i go here and change the particular radius that should make them bigger okay and if i put some variation it will put variation um uh, but then um i did that in my render and i've read some people say oh the physics is not very right because some smaller ball are going less um far than bigger balls and they are they are knocking them with uh, a lot of strength and normally the, sh the, the bigger ball should have more strength than the smaller ball. So basically if you want it to look like a little bit like accurate, don't, don't do that because obviously then you will have some bad critics. <laughs> um, if you don't care about it, then that's fine. You can add some random and because I don't care, I will add some random. No, not so much. Let's do two just so that they are a bit a bit different from time yeah that's that's good all right maybe if, um, four is a bit is, is, is a bit many now let's have a look at how they um, react with um, our um, particle here what what happens here let's have a look at that so a lot of drag 
Okay, so that's not exactly right. The reason why it's not right is because here the particle collision is affecting the, our emitter here, and we don't want that. We want to exclude this modifier here. Um, so this we want to exclude, and um, in fact, uh, on this one, yeah, I think we're good now. So let's let's have a look here. That should react differently now, and that's it. It start to have like more more interaction with our particular here and that's that basically is is the effect um, what we will do is we will make our ball bigger so that they don't disappear inside these um, so for that you understand that is the radius is just about the radius here let's do that and add a little bit more and that, let's have a look or oh, I could also reduce the size of our um, yeah, let's do that. Let's this uh, cube here. It's twenty three. I'm gonna reduce it a little bit, and I'm gonna put it back on the floor. And let's see what happens here. We have a little bit less, but you see now it's reacting better. At least we see our ball, and they're they're really doing something that like we want, and really reacting with. And knocking it shows that oh, it should not go through. So what I will do, what I had done in the other one, um, is I had put a plane, but that was more for the sake of my final render. And um, I had put it like huge. And um, and I had added a collider tag on it also, so that I think like that there is two collider tags and they will they will remain. Um, they will remain there also, collider tag, and I had uh, reduced the bounds and put a lot of friction on it. And this one can remain outside, that's good. And I think that will solve some of the problem of the, the ball going through. Okay, so basically that is the effect. Now of course, what you will need to do uh, for your final render is um, a couple of things now we on our um, fluid effects we are in accurate which is good it's good enough but we obviously don't have enough definition so what we would do is um, go to our emitter and redu reduce the radius here um, ideally the, sh the the smallest as you you can um if i do that that's still big if i do one it will start to to get long um to get generated because it's cr it will really really create um plenty and um and uh obviously if you can go even smaller i don't know i'm gonna try dot eight just to see be a little bit cheeky i hope it's not gonna crash the computer because there is a chance it can um i didn't save anything here um hopefully it won't crash the computer but um um all right so now i was playing a little bit with the fire so i'm going to do two things i'm going first to save this as um the a, 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 a test we're gonna call it like um, um, tutorial and in here I'm gonna name it tut and that's it so at least it's saved and obviously I'm not gonna start to run the simulation to show you how this will behave because it would it would take far too much time but um, I will go back to something like, I don't know, 1.8 and have a look how that behaves. And we will have a look. We will let it run. It will be a little bit, a little bit long before, before the first ball come here, but not too long. And let's have a look. 
and we start to have like some more details and obviously you understand the um, the principle of it now that you know that you you can um you can go on the parameters the other parameter that we could have a look at is on our emitter on the extended data the fluid data we haven't had a look at the stability and the cohesion so um, i could um r reduce the stability a little bit so that the 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 keep bigger chunks rather than to break up into so many um little balls so that it's like bigger bigger chunks um that will help with this especially as you increase your accuracy of your of your um simulation that that will help to get back to the details you see now they don't fly off as much as they did just before that's um that's that's because they're trying to be to keep a bit more together and um also what um we could do if we didn't want them to be so viscous we could reduce that and let's have a look at how that will that will behave um it's coming here and all what i'm doing now is obviously what you need to do on your own on your own simulation so you see now it's not as viscous again it will give a little bit more um less stickiness i guess um you will have to experiment with the the all 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 these parameters they are very little parameter the cohesion i didn't really play with it it seems to to be okay on the default like this i didn't need to do anything for my own um uh, render and um yeah and basically that's that's the trick um i'm not really going to explain you the whole um of how to render this but i do want to give you um a few tips all right um sorry i've been cut off so i was telling you i'm not going to explain you the whole of how to render this um but i want to show you a few things um about it the first is um about caching um, when you're happy with your simulation you need to cache and for that you need to go to object and then uh, choose other object and here you have a cache you choose a, a place where you want to to save your cache and you click on build cache so let me reduce this to i don't know um, like a, like a very short one we're gonna do like 50 frame and um and see and and, and just cache 50 frames like that build cache let's have a look how long it will take yeah you see like that will be like literally like a few minutes few seconds time enough for me to speak about uh the fact that i'm now using cycle 4d to render um to render x particles and other things it was very very hard for me to change i've always as discovered cinema 4d using arnold and i've never used any other renderer but arnold and i was very very panicked to change but um i must say that i'm really enjoying the cycle 4d things so um especially with X particle but not only he's got amazing other features and um, I'm liking it a lot nowadays um, so if I show you anything that I'm going to do today it will be with uh, cycle 4d in fact maybe I could move to my it's become my start start up now I'm starting Cinema 4D with Cycle 4D. Um, and I've got uh, two screens, so I've got my material, that's to build my material on my other screen that I keep always like that. It's very convenient to work. Here is my preview window. And um, at the moment, if I click preview, I guess nothing is going to happen because I have no light and I have nothing, no material also to show on the 
the the the, the particle. However, now that it's been cached, um, you see that the simulation is running on the real time. So that's that's good to do some preview caching before starting because you may not like the speed at which this is going or whatever and you can do some adjustment and cache again um, let's um, add a light in this scene so let's uh, light them using um, a plane I'm going to use this plane moving it up probably a little bit to the side and maybe rotate it uh, a little bit move it more out of my way for now and on this plane I will need a um, emissive here material if I put that on this material and click we should um, start to see a little bit nothing here and the reason why is because I am within my box I need to exclude these two boxes from from my render I don't, I don't I don't want and also I need to give a material to my to my um, let's just put a, a diffuse material on the particles obviously because otherwise we're gonna see nothing and now if I click that I start to see something that's good that's more like what I wanted here um, my emissive is a bit a bit too weak but you start to see that here we have we have what we want so then you choose your camera angle if this is on your way what you can do is um, you can just put a tag on it and remove it from the camera so that you see it disappear you don't see it anymore it's still in your viewport but you don't see it on the on the render um i could also have just hidden it but then i would not be able to move it anyway um here we are if you want to render this like this well fine you can but you can also with a cycle 4d do more than this um you can on the emitter you can put a cycle for the instance here and with this um, instance uh, tag you can reduce the sphere segment and you may not want to have like 24 segment per sphere uh, that's something that you, you 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 can you can do you can also you have a size multiplier you can change the the, the size of your of your of your spheres and you can also give some size variation to your spheres so you can see now it starts to, to look a little bit different that's quite cool and that's happening at render time which is great you can also do more than that if you want you can um, use object here like your own sphere let's say or let's um, I believe that I am at, let's check something. I think my radius is 1.8. So yeah, I have a radius of 1.8 here. So here, I will want to put um, a radius of 1.8 also. I believe I understood that, but I'm not exactly sure. And this, I can now put it into my, my emitter here. What you can do with that is you can create a material an uh, object material let's do that let's give it a different color for the for now and this material you can put it on the sphere and um up here we are so what you can do with this which is amazing and uh, is uh, you can um copy the material a few times change the specular the 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 color and uh, maybe maybe the, the the roughness also for 
for a few of them. Uh, change a little bit here. I'm really doing random things because this is not, I'm not going to render, but it's just to show you. And then you can copy your sphere here, like a couple of times, and take this material over this one, this one, over that one. And now we should, um, if I put these two sphere in here, we're gonna start to have variation in here. And that's that's invaluable when you want to do like very proper uh, render. You can also change the shape. It doesn't have to be a ball. And what is good is you can reduce the amount of um, of a, a segment here too. Basically, you can do a lot, and that's great. And that's it. Um, now we are having almost a real time here. And let's see what happens on here straight away. And that's great. So that's for the for the cycle for the things. Hello, this is Cedric again for um, not really a tutorial, but like an update um, of my last tutorial, um, uh, which you can still find on my Instagram here at this link. Um, that was um, showing how to do this type of uh, renders where um, balls are colliding and um, making like the sound um, explode a little bit everywhere. I've done a few examples of this. And um, later on, I've applied this to a character animation that is running. Um, this was very demanding on my computer. There is like something like three million particles in here um, working to make this uh, effect. Um, but um, as I was showing it to other people on the motion designer community, uh, Max, Max, uh, Maxim Hacker came back to me and told me that it would be very nice if this hexagonal grid could be randomized and I thought that was a very great comment. It would look a lot better if in fact to start with that was not so neat. I think he was very very right about that. So I just looked at how we could do that um, and um, I've, uh, I came up with, um, with a solution. Um, I've prepared a scene here that is uh, ready uh, to show you. So let me let me show you how that works. Um, if I go one frame up here, we can see that we have um, our our particles. They are they are ready to they are ready here to be to be to have the balls coming to collide, and they are they are now uneven they are not as even as they used to be on the other way so if that if i was to add my my sphere and my, my generator and my thing i think that would that would probably look a little bit better when the partic when the particle will start to 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 to, to collide with each other and and uh, react together like that so that's very very low definition obviously this is um, merely to show you how to randomize the particle, uh, which technique I use to do that. Um, all right, so um, basically, let's let, let me uh, take this one off. I don't need it anymore, and the generator also. I don't need it anymore. So what I've done is um, I set up my scene exactly the same as I used to before, with. Um, that's a cube that emits the particle on a hexagonal grid. Here, everything is very similar. Um, I've got my collision, my fluid defects, everything is the same. The only thing that I did is I used um, four, um, how do you call that, uh, modifiers to randomize them. So I used the turbulence. Uh, in conjunction with the gravity, a kill modifier, and a drag. Um, the, the, the whole of this allowed me to set my particle down here to this um, kind of state um, with the help of the initial state uh, that you have on the, on the emitter here. So you can go. Um, uh, what I will do is 
try to show you. I will try to to come back to a normal state and and do more or less what I've what I've done to to get to this to this position here. So let's have a look. Probably there is something easier that I've I've missed. I'm I'm absolutely not sure if you can um, by default have have a randomized grid, but uh, it seems to me that you can't. So that's why I came up with this solution. But if someone knows of a very, very easy way to do it, well, I'd be very, very happy to, to learn it too. But anyway, so what I've done is, what I will do now is I will clear the state that you can see was was uh, loaded here. So um, we are back to um, nothing and I will kill every um, modifier. And um, I think something crazy is going to happen here. Let's have a look. Yeah, so everything is exploding like crazy. And that's fine. Um, if I add a drag in here, it will um, slow down the, the type of explosion here. You can see that. And if I add my turbulence to create even more disturbance of my things here um that's that's like this then if i add my gravity the ball as the the timeline goes will start to fall down and um and let's have a look here so all right you see they start the they, they come and they, they, they kind of try to find a position so what i've done is I let it go for about like 50 frames, 40 frames, whatever. When, when I felt it was it was cool, and um, and what I was doing is I was going to the set state. So now, even if I if I um, if I take off my gravity and my turbulence, let's say or my drag, uh, I, I think it might, it might explode again. Let's have, let's have a look at that. Um, Okay, so here you see without without the, the the drag they start to get too excited again. So, but my state was um, a, a lot a lot better. So I will put the drag again here and let them rest a little bit more. Maybe I will reduce the drag um, here to let them fall down a bit more and try to set um, a new initial state on top of the other like this so I would go back to my um, emitter here up and I would do set initial state then I can come back to the beginning and we can you can do that as many times as you want until you have something that uh, suits you and then I would put my drag again a little bit higher up so that it's it helps stabilizing the 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 particle a little bit more I've done that a couple of times or a bit more than a couple of times I think and um, I also put a kill modifier I will explain you why because sometimes when they get a little bit too crazy it's um, it's good to, to kill the 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 particles that are going too wild uh, when especially on the first explosion so that's uh, that's that's what I had done in the in the first thing so let's first do a, another uh, initial state here let's go back here and let's see what what happens here all right well as you can see they start to get um, on the right position now I don't need my kill anymore I'm good and basically uh, set my stat uh, put my drag I forgot exactly where it was something like that and um, uh, do I need the gravity yes I will need the gravity for the um, for the, um, the rest of the of the um, uh, simulation so if I was to put to go back to the beginning and put back my generator and have a look at what happens here, um, that will come and that will start to react with the with the things like we had in the beginning. So with 
Um, some work, basically, you can you can you can get to um, a much finer results. Obviously, if you use three million particles, you're going to have a lot of um, patience and uh, a computer with very good specs, I guess, because that would be very time consuming. But that would be the thing. I also had done something that I forgot to mention here, and I never really knew exactly what it does, but I had uh, I've done some jittering also here. And maybe that was already enough to help with breaking the the the, um, the surface. But I don't think it was, otherwise I would not have gone through all this. Anyway, hope um, this little trick will help you to get with even better render than the one I have done. And um, always, um, always share uh, with me if you can. Um, I'm always happy when you post. If you if you tag me so that I see what you're doing, I'd, I'd be always happy. And uh, follow me here. I'm here. Um, come to my YouTube channel. Uh, that's always nice. And um, I hope to see you very soon around and see your renders. All right. See you guys. Bye bye.